In this video, we are going to discuss the 8th round of the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz 2022. And we are going to discuss the game of the Rapid section from the 8th round between Jeffrey Jeong versus Hikaru Nakamura. And yep, uh, St. Louis Rapid and Blitz tournament is uh, well known where many strong uh, uh, grandmasters play one of, uh, one of the top best players. So definitely we can learn from the games uh, of the world top players. So, Jeffrey Jeong is playing with the white pieces and Hikaru Nakamura is playing with the black pieces. Definitely, and no introduction is required to both the players. Uh, both the players are from USA. And uh, Hikaru Nakamura have actually started the tournament with low pace, actually. Uh, he started the tournament very badly, so definitely he's wanting a comeback. So the game starts with 1d4. And Nakamura replies with a knight f6, c4, and we have the... King's Indian Defense. The reason I'm going to uh, uh, analyze this game, this particular game, because there are many players who want a particular opening which can help them to win the game. Because there are many openings, like for example, you can play like this, but it's already very solid opening. If you want a must win situation, if you are in a must win situation, you can win, uh, like winning this. Uh, by playing this solid structure is absolutely hard. That is the reason King's Indian defense is actually one of the most attacking opening from the black side against 1d4. Bishop g7, we have e4 by white, b6, bishop e2, short castle, bishop e3, everything all very standard, all theory, e5. And guys, uh, just to notice, after d6, uh, I usually prefer f3 on my course. Uh, but we have bishop e2, short castle, bishop e3, e5, b5. So, uh, Jeffrey is like simply closing up the position. He's having more space on the, in the center. So usually what happens from here is, I'm just going to give you a basic idea. Black usually tries to play on the king side as the center is closed. You can see like this. The so black usually plays like this, trying to play f5. And what white does is, White tries to play on the queen side by playing b4, c5 and trying to make the d6 pawn very weak. We have knight to a6, knight to f3. The reason of knight a6 is it covers both the squares. First of all, it stops b4. Second, there could be a square for the knight to go on c5. Knight to f3, knight to g4, hitting the bishop because definitely black wants the bishop because dark square bishop is already very strong. All the white bishop is uh, very bad because of the pawns of the light squares. So definitely black wants the dark square bishop. We have bishop to g5. White do not want to give up the dark square bishop. f6, bishop h4. And here we have h5 by Nakamura. Nakamura wants to go full in. Like he wants to win this game. Like we already know that he has started the tournament at a bad pace. He wants to recover the pace by playing uh, aggressive chess. He played h5, knight to d2, white is playing very solidly, like simply hitting the knight on g4. Knight comes back to h6, we have f3, trying to make a room for the bishop to f2, trying to make the pawn structure much solid. We have knight f7, a3, definitely now white is preparing to play b4 followed by c5. Bishop to h6, queen to c2, c5. So a very good move, I would say, from the black side, trying to simply block up the position on the queen side, making b4 approach a bit harder for white to make. And like, if you try to end pass, like I I believe after being to c6, it's black who is better because now black can simply play bishop e6 followed by d5 break, which can be very healthy for black. And I think white is now in bit of trouble. So we have bishop to f2, like. Simply covering up the dark squares because there is there can be a good square for the bishop on e3. That is the reason we have bishop to f2 by white. Knight to c7, bishop to d3, bishop to d7. Simply developing up the piece. B4 finally white is trying to play on the queen side. B6, Hikaru is like, I'm not going to allow you to simply attack on the king. I, I like, I'm not going to allow you to play on the queen side because here, if white takes, b takes, and the pawn structure is already very solid, so it's the it's an equal position. We have rook b1, 
White is not trying to uh, simplify the position, trying to keep the position complicated. F4. Finally, uh, Nakamura is trying to play on the king side. And guys, just remember, if black goes for capturing up this pawn, now I think after a b4, white is the one who is actually very better because white can play c5 on the next move. And I think white is having a good chances to win the game because white is already better. But we have f5 trying to put pressure on the pawn on e4 because like first of all, you open up the rook file. Second of all, you create some pressure on the e4 pawn and like it's, 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 a, it's the natural approach from the black side. We have bc5, we have dc5 by black in this position. If uh, like you can also go for capturing of the with the b pawn, it's also a fine move. But just look at this. So it gives white the open file on the b5. But still it's a completely playable position. But we have d into c5 by Nakamura. He do not want to give the b5. We have EF5, GF5. So Zhang Jeffrey is simply trying to simplify the position. Like we can already sense that perhaps D pawn can be really weakened. We have short castle by white. All those who are wondering what happens if white simply captures the pawn on F5, it's a free pawn. That it's not a free pawn because of the bishop into D2. Shit. You can't capture with the queen because you lose the bishop. Second, if you try to capture with the king, queen check. It's a check and you lose the bishop on the next move. So it's, you basically be a piece down. That is the reason you can't capture and we are short castle by white. Queen to f6, now black is defending the pawn. Rook e1 and then, and then just look at the play of Nakamura. He played knight e8. He want to put the knight on d6 because as we know, knight is a good minor piece for blocking up the pawn, for blocking up any pass pawn. So it's a, it's a good score for the knight to go on d6 and well the knight on c7 was doing nothing so it's good to maneuver the knight and like Jeffrey wants to play on the queen side trying to create weakness on the b6 pawn that's what gen uh, general idea in the king's camp with the uh, king's indian defense is for white king h8 black wants to put the rook on g8 and trying to create some heavy pressure on the king rook e2 rook g8 e5 h4 trying to push on the king's side trying to push on the queen side it's a race now rook b1 knight g7 pawn takes pawn takes we have d6 i would say a fantastic move played by jeffrey a fantastic move a brilliant i would consider because that game d6 says first of all like it's actually not an easy move to find like first of all you're giving up the your connected strong pass pawn but in the exchange, first of all, it simply blocks the connection of b6. Now the b6 is simply hanging. And second, it makes a good square for the knight and b5. Like which simply hits the queen and the pawn. For example, if you try to capture the pawn with the queen, I simply have knight d5 and this pawn is simply hanging. So it already looks very te uh, tempting position for white because it, the knight is excellently placed on d5. Rook is coming in and it can be a huge trouble for black on the 6th rank. Unfortunately, that is the reason black played bishop to e6, not the most accurate, but definitely, it, yeah, we are, after all, we are human. Rook into b6 and it was a rapid game, yeah? So rook into b6, knight to h5, knight to b3. So basically, what's happening is, like, okay, let's move forward. First, we have knight f4. Hitting the rook, and now we have bishop into f uh, c5. Knight takes queen takes, and now what's happening? Basically, white have given up the rook for the two pawn, and uh, yeah, two pawn and the bishop. Basically, the imbalance is black white is having, like, let's take this knight and two pawn against the rook, which Material wise, it's an equal position, but these two pawns already look super dangerous for black. And they are, uh, let's see what happens. We have rook beat, uh, Nakamura trying to trade the rooks. We have the rook trades, and now we have knight to b5. Putting the, the knight on the good square, uh, pr also protecting the pawn on d6. h3, a very good move by Nakamura, a very tempting move, trying to open up the white king. We have g3 trying to lock the king side. And now, rook into b5 is a fantastic move, I would say, 
or perhaps a very tempting move all the I'm, 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 not, I'm not sure that was it the best but definitely practical wise it looks the good because like you can just say you can just see that why it's all pieces are on the king's queen side why is having two pass pawn which can be extremely dangerous so why is giving up the rook for the knight pawn takes bishop takes so what happens here is why be black basically give up the rook for the two knights which is a good deal for black i would say bishop to c4 trying to trade off the bishop nakamura simply happily traded the bishop and here we have knight in b6 queen d5 so now what's happening is after queen d5 black is having three pawns white is having four pawns so white is the pawn up but white uh white is simply a piece down you can already sense it white is simply a knight down against the pawn but fortunately this position is drawish because this pawn is too strong like like for example if you try to capture this pawn we have queen eight check and you try to move the king for example we have queen b6 seven check and we get the knight back and it's a drawish game so yeah it's, it's, it is a drawish game uh, so after, but after queen g5, we have bishop to f8, trying to protect the knight, and f4 by Jeffrey. A very natural move, I would say, because in this position, Jeffrey wants to capture the pawn. And for example, it doesn't matter what black push, or what black tries to capture the pawn. It's going to be met with bishop d4, king and the queen is hit, and white won. Yeah? So basically black cannot capture the push or uh, cannot capture the pawn or cannot push up the pawn. And like actually Nakamura find a fantastic move I would say in this position. Can you find it as well? You are in the shoes of Hikaru Nakamura and you need to find the only winning move for black to win the game. Can you find it? So free feature pause the video and try to find the best move. Okay, so all those who have came up with this legendary move, not definitely not easy to find in a rapid game when both of the uh, guys are having, uh, both the guys are extremely low on time. 94. Wow. I would say wow. The reason is quite simple. After 94, white simply captured the bishop. And it looks like if black captures the bishop back, perhaps pawn takes or perhaps i think even queen takes and we have two pawns against four pawns which can be most likely a drawish game for white white can definitely hold this game i think if uh, white plays the perfect chess and i think even pawn takes uh, looks a fine move yeah just look at these two deadly pawns but bishop into f8 nakamura came with a fantastic a very good move in chair four. Capturing the pawn and after capturing the pawn, Jeffrey decides to resign the game. The reason is you need to be a bit careful because of the back rank issue. If the back rank mate, you can just see. The only way to defend it is by playing queen d1. And after queen d1, we can play queen b6 check. It's actually made in fire. Like for example, if you try, like if you move the king, you have this knight check and you lose the queen. And if you try to play over here, you lose because of the check move. So basically, it's completely losing. So there's no play. Even I think you can even go for capturing the bishop. It still should be completely winning for black. You are simply a piece. Of. So guys, that was the reason after each four Nakamura won the game, and a good move and a good game I would say by him. He's trying to make a comeback slowly and steadily. And the basic point was to discuss that King's Indian defense is definitely not a bad opening. It can be played with the black pieces. And it's a very aggressive opening if you are an attacking player. If you want to, like, if you do not like any draw types of games, if you like to have some imbalances. You can definitely go for playing up this opening. It's a very aggressive opening, I would say. And you just you can just simply look at the game. Yeah? Black plays on the king side, white plays on the queen side. But black is the one who usually attacks who usually goes for the king. You can already sense it. 
where caste cells and how black continued was simply phenomenal. Black simply uh, get all his pieces in the game. Like D6 was a good move, I need to admit it. Like you can just see how black simply maneuvered his knights. He gave up another pawn, but he get the rook. Knight gets the rook. Eventually we have this position where black is simply a P7. And I think though it's a drudge game, but making this uh, making a draw uh, with the white pieces is I think a bit difficult. Because you are at last you are a piece of yeah. So guys, this was the game. This was a fantastic game. I I hope that you must have liked the game. If you liked the game, then make sure to like the video. Uh, I'm going to come up with the recaps of the interesting games, the uh, the game which I love the most. Uh, in a particular round, I try to upload the uh, video and I try to upload the analysis of the game so that it actually might help you to improve your. Chess, uh, chess skills because definitely by watching the games of top levels it definitely helps every chess player to improve their chess skills so i hope that you have liked this and i'm going to come up with these interesting videos like this so till then stay tuned and keep watching one shot chess